If you're going to be doing any sort of calculation for your car and its suspension, you will most likely have to know the location of the center of gravity or CG for short. In this video, I will show you a concise way of how you can figure out the CG location of any car for yourself. I will demonstrate what measurements you'll have to do and also the equations you'll have to solve. I'll show you the process for determining the location of the CG in the longitudinal direction or X as well as the vertical Z direction. The process for the sideways or Y direction is the same as for the X but for most applications if you're not doing anything super precise it is completely fine just to say that the Y coordinate is in the middle of the car. And for context all of the examples will be done on my modified BMW E36 drift car. Ok, let's start with the longitudinal coordinate. The thing that plays the most important role here is the drivetrain layout of the car. FF cars with front engine and front wheel drive will have its CG located a lot closer to the front axle than MR or RR cars with mid or rear engines and rear wheel drive. In my case I have an FR car with front engine and rear wheel drive which should have close to 50-50 weight distribution. But because I know that a stock E36 has a little bit more weight towards the front and because mine was lightened a bit and most of the weight saving came from the back, I can expect the weight distribution to be pushed more towards the front. Moving on to the measurements, the thing you will need to measure is the wheelbase, that is the distance between the front and rear axle and the front and rear axle weights. You can find the wheelbase for most stock cars in online databases or if you did any mods to the suspension you can just measure it yourself with steel tape. For the weights, you're going to need some scales and they're gonna have to be scales that can handle the weight of the car. There are many different ways you can do this. The easiest and most accurate option is to weigh your car on professional corner scales which are meant for this exact purpose. But I know that not everyone has access to these, so here are some alternatives. You can go to a junkyard or anywhere where they have a scale for measuring trucks or truck axles and just weigh the individual axles of your car. Just make sure that the car is being weighed on level ground. Another alternative where I've seen people get good results is using more house scales with a beam on top to distribute the weight between them so not to max them out. But again, make sure that you're weighing the car on level ground. When you've got your measurements, it's time to do the math. This is all pretty simple stuff. And after you apply simple physics, you end up with this equation which says that the distance between the front axle and the center of gravity equals to the mass of the rear axle multiplied by the wheelbase and then divided by the sum of the masses of the front and rear axle. You can also calculate the distance from the rear axle by just replacing the mass of the rear axle in the numerator with the mass of the front axle. Now you put in your data and you're good to go. For my car, the distance from the front axle to the CG is 1.264 meters and it is also closer to the front axle which makes sense as the car has more weight in the front. Ok, now that we have our longitudinal CG coordinate, it's time to find out the vertical aka the CG height. You are once again going to have to weigh the car, but this time it's going to have to be a little different. Instead of the car being level, you're going to have to lift one of the axles. Again, there are multiple different ways to do it. The simplest is of course to just use a lift. But I've also seen some people had some success using a forklift and a truck axle scale. Also, you're going to need to measure the angle of the car while you have the axle lifted. I recommend that whatever you do, you lift one of the axles up as much as possible. The larger the incline of the car, the more accurate the results are going to be. I first tried to do this by putting one axle on the scale and lifting the other with a jack. Unfortunately the jack could only lift the car so much and I only managed to get about 7 or 8 degrees of incline, which unfortunately wasn't enough. Using the corner scales and the lift I managed to get an incline of as much as 16 degrees which gave me pretty good results. Before you go ahead measuring there is one more thing that I need to mention. Some of you may have already noticed that when you lift the car like this, the distribution of weight also changes. When one of the axle is lifted, most of the weight transfers to the axle on the ground. And with the additional weight, it causes the springs to compress and at the same time the springs on the lifted axle to decompress. What you end up with is a car sitting at a pretty awkward position. How much of an effect this has is dependent on how stiff your springs are. If you have pretty stiff springs, then it might not be that bad. But if you want accurate results, I recommend you somehow prevent the suspension from drooping. In my case, I replaced the springs themselves with PVC pipes cut to the length of the springs when the car is sitting in a neutral position 
on level ground. Alright, with the measurements done, it is once again time to do the math. It is a little more complicated this time, but you can still get by by applying some simple physics. And you end up with this equation, where the height of the CG of the car is equal to the 1 divided by the tangent of the incline of the vehicle, multiplied by the longitudinal distance between the CG and the rear axle, subtracted by the mass of the front axle, multiplied by the wheelbase, and then divided by the total mass of the car. You then also have to add the static radius of your wheel, which you can simply measure. However, note that this equation only works if the axle that is lifted is the front. But you can simply just modify the equation by changing the distance between the CG and the axle with the front one and also replace the axle mass with the rear one. After you insert your measurements, you now have the height of the center of gravity of your car. I did this for my car at the stock right height and I've calculated that the CG height is about 55 centimeters from the ground, which sounds about right. I've also confirmed this number with a website where someone was doing some suspension analysis on their E36 and I'll link it down in the description if you're wondering about the values of any other important suspension metrics. Also, down there will be a link to a very good article on the subject done by Suspension Secrets which explains things in a little different way and goes into more detail. If you'd like to know where the equations used in this video came from and want to hear the full explanation, let me know down in the comments and if there is enough interest, I'll make a more in-depth video. I hope you found the video useful, if you have any questions, post them down in the comments and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability. I'd like to thank you for watching the video, if you liked it and found it useful, you can leave a like on it if you want and also subscribe to be notified when new videos come out. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.